We're on location at the Dikulolo Resort and Game Reserve near Brits. Because what better than to get a nice big 4x4 SUV and take it out to the country into a game park. That's one of the indulgences of my life I'm going to tell you. The latest generation facelifted version of the Mitsubishi Pajero Sport. You can see over here they gave it the bold dynamic shield family face of Mitsubishi. So it's got that big there, you've got the chrome trim over here, the chrome effect. Very interesting treatment of the headlights. Look at this. These stacked headlights over here and of course the high beam there and the daytime running light across there. So you've got all these new features that bring it up to date and make it look pretty aggressive as far as I'm concerned. In the true tradition of a nice 4x4 you've got big wheels over here you can have a look and you can see it makes a big difference to have your 18 inch wheels. Lots of clearance for the wheel arches if you're going to do some 4x4ing as well which is important. Neat two-tone mag wheels. It's a big vehicle we know it's big body and you've got a nice significant running board which is useful when you're short like me to get in and out and up and down and things like that so again important we'll look at the in the rear a bit in a bit more detail just now but we come around of course look there's a very big c pillar for a big vehicle like this with a quite a large angle you can see rear we window which is useful again for those people in the cheap seats those seven six and seven seats right at the back that open up you of course come around to the back you press the button and also a feature of the facelift you can have a look at these very interesting sort of vertical tail lights over here which I like and is a nice feature. As a five seater you can see you certainly have gigantic gigantic boot space very neatly done and you've also got a pretty neat little spot over there for storing things etc and uh, it's quite a useful area as well. We'll look at the seating as I said in a few moments. You've got the spare wheel underneath over there. You've got reverse parking beepers, park distance control as well as obviously a reverse camera. So you've got all those features. Press button and the door will close nice and slowly. This is the top of the range exceed version which means it's the top spec version and of course it does have Mitsubishi's Super Select 2, the latest generation 4x4 technology in it as well. All the models in the range are powered by Mitsubishi's 2.4 litre four-cylinder diesel engine putting out 133 kilowatts and a nice big 430 newton meters of torque. So that's got enough for a big vehicle like this. Very important. Let's check out seating and inside. Of course, one of the advantages and one of the reasons you should have if you buy a 4x4 vehicle is to come to a game park and to check around and see the game and do a game drive on your own. I mean, look here, I'll even go a little bit closer to a couple of zebra. There you can see over there, there's a blessed book, there's a couple of giraffes and oh, there isn't a blessed book, there's a whole bunch of blessed book, look at this. and oh. Zoom in on that baby there, come. Baby with mommy, can you see that? There you go. You don't always see the babies. It's quite a treat to see babies. But what I'm saying is that now you can go game watching in comfort. I'm in four high just because we're on a dirt road and so we may as well be in four high mode. Not that we're doing any four by fouring, but it's just safer to do so. But this is the luxury way of doing it. And I honestly wish that more people who bought vehicles like this would actually come and do what we're doing right now and that's come and check out nature and come and do a bit of game watching. Why not? What I always find interesting with vehicles of this sort is what is the access to those two rearmost seats and that's so important. So we'll look at stage one. The middle seat, can we call it the split two-thirds, one-third, which is nice and useful. And I'm on the smaller section. You pull the lever on top here, pull that down, and then it flips up like that. So we'll check that out in a second. Rear most seats up is a little bit more complicated. You come here, you lift just a piece of carpet out the way. 
that's pretty easy. Then you've got two straps over here and you simply go, whoops, like that. Then you've got to go back to the back door. So I'm going to say this could be a bit of a clumsy operation, but uh, it's not bad, I suppose. And then what you do is you just simply push the base down. But now comes the test. And now comes the acid test. Let's see how easy it is for me to climb in to those back seats. So let's go. Up onto the running board, that's easy enough. In here. Okay, you've got to duck your head down a bit. But I must say, this is fairly... This is fairly spacious. Not bad at all. Then let's see. We'll now pop the seat into place. You've got to obviously put it down a bit, get it down, and there you go. Well, my legroom is a little bit limited, I must admit. But interesting, the headroom is not bad with my hat on. So I won't complain about that right now. As I said, I'm a little bit more worried about my legroom. But I'll live with that. But what I do like is if you look over there, you do have air convents for this Remo seat. That's a good touch because otherwise you're going to get pretty hot and uncomfortable back here. Remembering that these big windows I showed you from outside don't open. But thanks for those at least, Mitsubishi, and that would be appreciated. So let's see, now I want to get out of here. What's it going to be like? Press, flip. Hey, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. And then a bit of twisting, but not bad. I must tell you, I've come across much, much worse. One more feature that I believe will always be appreciated by family users is the two USBs and this accessory plug in the back, in the, cen in the center console for the middle row seats. That's something you don't get on all the competitors and well done on that Mitsubishi. Good stuff. From the driver's seat as always you can see quite nice digital instrumentation gives you everything you need. We'll show range to empty as well in a moment which will just come up because obviously we've got doors open just because it's seriously seriously hot. Look at that 35 degrees outside right now. You come down you've got the multi-function steering wheel of course that's got the cruise control over there and you've got phone controls over here. You've got everything you want. I mean these are all very standard very normal. Your trip computer functions over there. I'm not going to show all of this to you. You've got nice very substantial flappy not flappy paddles they're substantial paddles for the automatic transmission and I'll come to that in a moment but very nice very neat you've got good obviously leather all around and nice stitching even on the doors which is a nice effect over here you come across to the center screen and you have a look you've got a nice 8 inch touch screen over here and in the modern way and I suppose I mustn't complain about it anymore you've got everything you want but you don't have standard navigation you've got to use Apple CarPlay or uh, Android Auto to get that well I suppose it's something you've just got to live with but it does work very well very functional an interesting button over here I found was when I pressed this button there listen to the beeping and that closes the rear hatch from inside nice and easy for the driver and there you go don't find that on all similar vehicles. You come further down back on the dashboard and you'll see your climate control aircon. Pretty effective, good fan, I've got no complaints. But something, you've got the vents at the back I've mentioned, but something I've got to tell you. I found it interesting that the lowest temperature I could get it to was 18 degrees. On a lot of vehicles you can go a lot lower than that. I suppose, just something, mention it. Again, I mentioned the USBs at the back, well look here, an HDMI and two USBs up front as well. Nicely done, good stuff. There's your diff lock switch if you need to use it for anything. If you ever need it, well, question, but it's there for you. Now we come down to the standard automatic. It's an 8-speed auto, very smooth, very effective. 
nothing much to say about it. It's just a good automatic gearbox. It's standard, it's well paired with this engine. You come down here, this is obviously one of the crucial knobs over here for too high, four high, and four low as well, which you can go into. I've used quite a bit of four high just on this dirt road we're on, just because on dirt, four high is a better option. You've got hill descent control as well, nice as well, and an automatic electronic parking brake. Another feature is you've got electric adjustment on the driver's seat, not on the passenger seat. Okay, well, looking up above us on the Exceed model, sunroof, but I've got to say, come on Mitsubishi, a vehicle like this really begs for a panoramic roof and not just the little sunroof like this. If you're going to have one, I'd really like to have the whole hog and the real thing and not a small one like that. But again, this is me and it's as you want it. Overall, you can see, very comfortable, big, spacious for family, obviously as normal, put up those back seats, you lose boot space, but that applies to all its competitors as well, and we all know who those competitors are. But I must say the facelift, it looks much, I think, more modern and aggressive, from the front in particular. The interior, well, it's got pretty much everything I'd ask for, that's for sure, for a vehicle like this. I don't think there's much lacking. And the engine, that 2.4, well, the only complaint I'll give you on the engine is it's not a total ball of fire, for example, when overtaking. So just plan your overtakes that little bit more. The pickup is not as quick as some turboed and bi turboed competitors. So keep that in mind and just remember that fact because that is important when you're on the road and if you're planning an overtake, it's very, very crucial. Besides that quality, but one other thing I have noticed is if you just look at the back doors and note that the window is fully down on the electric window, but doesn't recess all the way down into the door. Now for game watching like we're doing right now, I think I would really appreciate that window dropping all the way. Small point, but I've got to mention some point sometime. Well, what do you pay? Isn't that always the question? This model, the top spec, which has everything, the Super Select 2 4x4, etc., is 689,900. Can I call it 690,000 Rand? You can get into the Pajero Sport with the same engine gearbox combination, but a 4x2 version for just over 600,000. So that's your price range. The one we're in now, as I said, 690. It's competitive in this category. And that's very, very important. Mitsubishi may be a niche competitor, but I think they've got a pretty good product here. And certainly, if you don't want to follow the herd and get you know which most popular competitors, take a look at this one. Always, always, it's up to you. For Motor Matters, I'm Eleanor, and I'll see you next time.